my darling dearest, thank you so much for joining us this evening for the very first public entree of Odd Salon Shorts. I started this evening muted like I do in all of my Zoom calls at work. Um, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Amy Widowson. I'm a founding fellow here at Odd Salon, and it's my pleasure to be curating and hosting this evening. Um, thank God for the chat. <laughs> uh, so tell me, how do shorts work? Tonight, we're going to be presenting five, five minute ish talks on subjects from the odd corners of history, science, art, and adventure. Just like our live salons, everyone is welcome here on our virtual stage. Our speakers are both experts and amateurs, so please be generous with your enthusiastic praise in the chat. So let's get to this. Welcome to Mistakes Were Made. Featuring in no particular order, an error-filled error ride with amateur assassins, Disneyland's Black Sunday, a few errant and naughty letters in a Bible, an important lesson in engineering, and the most infamously memed and misunderstood taxidermy in history. But first, I want to tell you about my favorite mistake. Leading with a bad joke, we just had to start there. Um, let's actually get to the historical mistakes, why don't we? Okay, humor me for a bit. It's the mid 19th century and you're this guy. You've decided that you wanna give your family a better, more prosperous life in California. So you pack them all up and join a caravan of emigrants heading towards the Sierra Nevada, despite the fact that you have little to no experience crossing a continent. And it is taking so long and the kids are so bored and the rest of this wagon train is just full of weirdos. So along the way, you become convinced to take a shortcut that will get you there faster. And because you are a very special man, you decide you're gonna take that shortcut, join a few others and split off from your group to find a better way. But, now you're sitting at a way station in Wyoming before your detour has even begun, and you find yourself sitting across from a friend saying, oh, hell no, don't take that alternative route. This is a man you've trusted with your life, and here he is sitting across from you telling you that it may be impassable in winter, which is quickly approaching. And then he tells you that the guy who wrote that book, the guy who's selling that shortcut super hard, is full of crap. Your friend says that if you don't listen to him, your entire family and all of the families in your caravan are in grave danger. If you were James Reed, what do you do? Do you admit you were wrong? Do you risk looking silly in front of all the patriarchs of the wagon train and possibly set everyone back up to a year for the route to clear? Okay, now's the time I'm gonna add a little bit of further context. What would you do if you had the foresight to know that that cutoff led journey ends in only half of your emigrant group emerging alive out of the Sierra Nevada at Sutter's Fort with tales of gruesome frostbite, starvation, murder, and alleged cannibalism? Once again, for good measure. <laughs> One of our very first Odd Salon evenings seven years ago included a talk about the daughter party. We could do an entire E entire season of evenings on the weirdness that is their tale of wo woe. But this is shorts. And for those of you who don't fill your holiday reading with histories, yes, plural, of the most famous emigrant ta tale gone horribly awry, here's the TLDR. In 1846, a group of pioneers set out on the Oregon Trail in the hopes of reaching the West, but they started late. And like all pioneer trips, this process was slow and hard and everything went wrong. And they found themselves racing the clock against the infamous mountain snows that were guaranteed to break even the most hardy of riders, and especially could break a group of greenhorn city folk. So they took a shortcut, which was actually longer. And as a result, the caravan ended up snowed in near Donner Lake in the High Sierra, trapped for five whole months with no shelter, no way to get out, and not a bite to eat except each other, allegedly. At the end of all of it, of the 81 emigrants, only 45 emerged alive and soon gruesome tales emerged. We could spend all night detailing the myriad ways the Donner Party messed up, but there's one mistake I would like to discuss today because they were warned and they were specifically warned about this guy. This fucking guy. This is Lansford Hastings, a lawyer, aspiring adventurer, and general bullshit artist. In 1845, as a bid to get Americans to move to California and not Oregon, he published The Emigrant's Guide to Oregon and California, claiming that the fastest way to California was to abandon the Oregon Trail altogether and bear west-southwest. 
His pamphlet spread far and wide and was eventually seen by the Donner Party. There was just this we problem. Despite how much he insisted on the awesomeness of his route, Hastings himself had never actually taken it. In Desperate Passage, author Ethan Rarick so beautifully and bluntly states, quote, Hastings offered little detail about the new route, and for good reason. He had never set foot on an inch of it. So when Hastings published his guide, he'd never traveled the Salt Flats. He'd never navigated the treacherous Wasatch Range, and he certainly had never done any of it in the dead of winter. Even when he finally decided to trek his now famous cutoff, he did it backwards in mild weather, and it was still super hard. So difficult, in fact, that one of Hastings' travel companions, who actually had significant mountain and travel experience, complained that it was all malarkey. Meet James Kleiman, an actual adventurer. Kleiman was returning back to his home out east when he joined Hastings on his trip tracing the reverse cutoff. Kleiman quickly noticed how useless Hastings at his damn shortcut was, or excuse me. So once they'd stopped past the salt flats, Kleiman left Hastings and went on ahead. And once he got to Fort Laramie, Kleiman eventually came upon a familiar face. There, he met up with our friend James Reed. So back to where we began. After downing a few drinks and catching up, Kleiman proceeded to strenuously warn Reed to stay away from Hastings and his cutoff. Kleiman was persuasive. As Desperate Passage describes, quote, Kleiman was a rare combination, half Southern gentleman, half mountain man, unquote. So logically, his feedback should have held weight with Reed. And this is an aside. <laughs> These men served with a certain honest man. I mean, come on, but that's for another short. Like so many fateful moments of the Donner Party, ego overwhelmed and warnings were not heeded. And the, this warning in particular wasn't heeded. So the rest is history. I was very lucky to get to do one of the last IRL odd salons back in May, wherein I had the challenge of trying to make the stories about the children's crusade funny, and as Trey and Annette told me not, absolutely soul crushing. So I was really, really hoping I could end this invocation on a funny note, or at least tell a tale about how Mr. Hastings get, was slowly eaten to death by fire ants for fun and profit. Instead, I'm here to report to you that after this whole Donner Party debacle went down, Mr. Hastings got on with his life. He got married and he went back to practicing law. And you see, I thought I was so clever that I had the juiciest of endings. But my friend, once again, mistakes were made. You see, I had it in my mind that this snake oil salesman was the guy who founded the UC Law School of the very same name here in San Francisco. Alas, that fact was just some stuff on the internet. <laughs> they are not in fact the same person. I can tell you though that this dude fought for the Confederacy on behalf of California? All right. Then fled to Brazil with a bunch of his gray coat buddies and was eventually felled by the most ruthless serial killer of the animal kingdom, the jerk mosquito, dying of yellow fever in the US Virgin Islands. Now, in the before times, we'd normally at the end of an invocation like this, get together and read a long and inspiring quote to really color the evening. But in the spirit of that format, let's quickly raise a glass. Never take no cutoffs and hurry along as fast you can. So the next time you cross the Donner Pass on your way to Truckee, or think about taking that shortcut a stranger gave you, Remember that sometimes listening to your friends and acknowledging you're wrong is a heck of a lot better than eventually having to allegedly eat your friends. Cheers.